One of the most common things that I hear from people who have just learned how to do 3D printing is they look at this single nozzle 3D printer and say something like, can't it do more than one color? And you know, there are options. No kidding, a lot of people when they learn how to use 3D printing wonder about how to overcome the limitations of a single nozzle machine. And a lot of times they'll say something along the lines of, couldn't we make it do more than one colors if we do? Yes, they're already thinking about a solution. I love it, it's absolutely wonderful. And yes, there are many, many options for creating multicolor 3D prints, some of which don't even rely on any sort of specialized hardware. Of course, the first option, the easiest thing that you could do is you could just paint your 3D prints. Of course, painting a 3D print works with any 3D printer, but it takes a lot of time and it relies on operator skill. Although to be fair, it's not actually as bad as you might think. I painted this mini, I modeled this mini, but then I painted it using miniature painting techniques and I had no idea what I was using, uh, what I was doing with this thing. But if I can, you know, just toot my horn a little bit, I think I did a pretty good job with it. I think this little barred minotaur looks really, really good. And yeah, so if you just jump in with acrylic paints, 3D prints love acrylic paints and then hit it with a little bit of shellac or finisher afterwards, you can get a really good look on it. I also used painting on my Urboards, the Royal Game of Urboards to give them more color. Now this one did have a design that kind of aided in the printing because there were raised and lowered parts to help you know where to put the color on there. So sometimes your design can help you. Of course, the next category is kind of manually changing the filament, and there are actually a lot of different techniques in there. I almost think that changing filament at specific layers could, should probably be its own category because it does require very specific design, design that prints a whole color that it needs to and then gets out of the way for the next color to go in. The whole thing kind of takes a pyramid shape. It's not difficult to design for this sort of 3D printing, but it does take a little bit of cleverness to plan it out ahead of time. And then it's a fairly manual process. You almost have to watch the print because when it stops, it's gonna cool down. So you wanna swap that filament out as much as possible. You're gonna pretty much have to be there the whole time while it prints. Now there are other techniques that you can do with manually changing the filament. Devin at Make Anything does some really cool things right now with breaking his print up into the multiple colors, but then only printing like one or two layers and then print, you know, stopping the print or, or having that print finish and then printing the next one right on top of it and the next color and the next color and the next color and then the last color that then finishes out the rest of the print and binds it all together. It's a neat technique. It's very clever and very clever design. There was somebody else on YouTube who I can't find her videos right now, but she made Christmas ornaments with many different techniques. And if I can find them, they'll be in the cards. But what she did, one of the techniques was she, she printed one part and then pulled it off the print bed, printed another part, and while it was printing, embedded that part into the print and let the print continue over it to allow that multicolor combination. All of these techniques take a little bit of clever design and they're a very manual process. It's, it's a lot of you doing a lot of work to overcome this limitation, but it does work with any 3D printer and they're a lot of fun and very rewarding to do. Of course, if you have some specialized hardware, maybe multi-material is a possibility for you. Now, multi-material includes a number of different technologies. 3D printers with multiple nozzles, that is, is one form of multi-material. There's also the multi-material upgrade for the Mark III 3D printer or the pallet. 
all of these can be tricky to set up and they can be a little bit tricky to design for. Also, they're can be a little bit wasteful. With multiple heads, it's not as bad, but there's still ooze towers and things like that. And with the multi-material upgrade where it has to purge the nozzle between colors in order to get a pure material coming out, they create this block of waste plastic afterwards, and it can be a little bit frustrating. Of course, support materials and wasted prints 3D printing is no stranger to a little bit of waste, and honestly, it's not its not a whole lot of waste that you can do. And the results are very impressive, very clean. However, it's not what I would call full color. Like switching out filament manually, you can only do as much color as you're willing to make the switches for, or as you have feeds going into your machine. Still, it can make for beautiful designs and multi-material is one, another great way to do color in 3d prints join the filament of the month club today now material blending i'm not quite sure if it's in the same category as multi-material or if it should be its own category it does require specialized hardware, hardware that brings in multiple materials and feeds them through the same nozzle, but can allow you to feed two of them at once, which means the melt zone is above where these meet just a little bit. And then they've got enough time coming out to blend together to come out in one color. Now, it because you do need to purge in order to get to the full, to, to the pure color, it's not what I would call full color. You can bring in colors at specific rates and mix them at specific rates, but in order to get them coming out the right color, you still have to do a purge. So while you can, with color mixing, do way more colors than are coming in, coming out, you still have, it's not full color. You could do 20 colors with just four filaments coming in, but it's not full, full color. The problem with it is it's, very much DIY. There are, to my knowledge, no commercial fully together 3D printers that use this technique right now. There are a couple out there that are potential, but they haven't seen that potential realized just yet at the time of recording. I hope that there will be a commercial buy it and print with color mixing soon because I'd love to see this technique. It, it, to me, it's exciting to bring in four colors and output a, a rainbow array of colors. I think that the possibilities that that opens up are super exciting. Just, it's not there yet. Editing room, Joe, having to jump in here real fast for two quick things. First of all, I need to thank Andy and Whitney of the 3D Printing Today podcast for supplying the multi-material blending pictures that you have seen in the last section, including the one that shows just the extrusion and how it kind of looks like, like Aquafresh toothpaste because it's not really blending, and that's what they're finding so far. Maybe this is why this technology isn't going so well. But thank you, Andy and Whitney. They posted these pictures on the 3D Printing Tips and Tricks Google group, which if you're not on that forum, on that Google group forum, they'll send you emails every day. There's a lot of really good experience in that forum. If you have a question, that's the place to ask it. So that's my little plug for that Google group. The second thing I need to mention in here is that there is a, a multi-material blending option on the commercial level. Stratasys has a polyjet printer, which is worth looking up. It's an absolutely fascinating technology. I've seen it in action. You're not likely to have it in your home anytime soon. Oh, I wish I could, though. I mentioned that because in the next section, I'm going to be talking about another commercial option that I felt... Okay, if I mentioned that one, I needed to mention this one. Now I have, so let's just go on with the video. And of course, there are some 3D printers that can do full, full color. These prints aren't even taking advantage 
of the full color that these 3D prints can do. The 3D printers that can do it are very, very limited. You pretty much only have two options. You can get a Da Vinci Color, for which there is now the Da Vinci Color Mini, or you can order a print on Shapeways and they'll print it in sandstone. And these are also limited in material. The Da Vinci Color only works with their very special blend of PLA and Shapeways only really does it in sandstone. So if you need the material properties of nylon or pet g or something else you're out of luck if you want to do full color the results of full full color 3d printing is super super impressive i i still think that we should explore full color 3d printing a little bit more how do you design best for multicolor 3d printing should you just design it for single color 3d printing should you design it for the multi-materials should you design it for two multi-materials or four or 20 multi-materials or could you possibly make a 3d print that could work for any technique no matter what hardware you've got well i've recently started exploring that with a series of cute little animals that I'm modeling. What you do is the, the general technique, and I've talked about this in the past, is to make it so that it's like you do with any 3D print, one solid mesh on the outside, but each part has different colors. Well, that works for some techniques, but not for the multi-material techniques. And what I discovered was I was going about it backwards. You don't combine them into one mesh. You keep them as separate Emb embedded adjacent bodies next to each other, but you still do the coloring with them. That way, if you've got multi-material, you just break it apart into its component parts and assign each part to a color and it comes out fine. But if you've got full color, you just throw it at the full color 3D printer. And yes, there's some geometry inside it as the two bodies that are next to each other fill in their shells but that's really not a big deal and if you've only got one color you just throw it at there and it works this technique so far i'm super excited to see where it goes and i hope that you're excited to see what i do with it next because uh, keep an eye on this channel if you want to know more about what i'm going to do with that make sure you're subscribed and i don't often say that but uh I got some stuff coming down the line, but until then, I hope that I have inspired you in some way to try something new and push 3D printing just a little bit further. And if you come up with something cool, hit me up on Discord and show me what you're doing in the What You Making channel. I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.